In this video I'm going to do an overview on the Velvet Drive. It is uh, used on a ski boat and on V-Drive boats. Um, it is a hydraulic transmission, that means it uses oil pressure to transfer between forward and reverse. It uses an external cooler and the temperature sensor actually is mounted on the external cooler. Um, this is the way you'll get it from the factory and the two uh, plugs are removed and uh, this is where your pipes will go. The transmission have a neutral safety switch that needs to be connected and if it will fail you will not be able to start your boat. This is the internal view for the transmission and if you look here where it says in this is where your motor is connected, out is where your uh, V-drive or your um, shaft will go to your propeller. You have the control valve and you have the oil seals, the input seal and the output seal. You have a built-on oil pump that creates the oil pressure. Obviously you have the uh, dipstick and you have your oil strainer that catches anything, any dirt in your oil that comes back from the cooler. Um, this is an exploded view of all the internal parts, uh, just in case you need that. I always find this helpful. Now this is how your oil path works. The oil comes back from the cooler, you can see it here in blue, goes into your pump. The pump uh, creates a high pressure that is uh, flowing up into your regulator valve and also that's where you control your forward and reverse. Um, some of the oil goes directly into general lubrication that will go into all your bearing and uh, gears and so on just to keep them oiled. Once your oil pressure builds up, the valve will open and send some of this oil into the cooler. The cold oil will go back into your screen filter and go back into the pump. Now, once you put it in forward gear, you can see in yellow, some of this oil in purple inside the gear will go and press the forward gears, making your boat drive forward. Once you push the lever into reverse, it'll go through a different path and go through this yellow path and will push your boat into reverse. Now, if you want to check your pressure, you can buy a pressure gauge for $40 and just connect into this connector on the top and make sure it's correct. Now you can see here the cooled oil return and this is what we're going to go over next. The correct way to get your oil out is through this plug on a velvet drive. I'll show you how to uh, reassemble it since I didn't take a video of assembling it. This is your uh, strainer. It goes in like this. And the cover goes. It's really easy to reach if you have a ratchet. It's a 1 and 116. Don't over tight that, but it makes it much easier to. Normally this part will just go here and this will just go here and that's here. I actually am looking to improve this design so next time I don't need to disassemble this whole thing. And what I did is get a T. This is a 3.8 T. And I'm planning to put this in this manner, which next time all I have to do is unplug this and I can completely drain this old tranny without disassembling this whole thing and without making such a mess. So that's it. I'll preassemble this so I don't have to do it when I'm bent over to put it there. And now all I have to do is just put this in place and this should reach pretty easily, let's hope so. <laughs> and it shouldn't interfere with the V-drive as you can see here, so let's uh, tie this up and see how it works. Yeah, not the most 
comfortable place to work here. This is the uh, reverse flare connector. As you can see, it's the same as the uh, brake lines. And this also is a reverse flare adapter, obviously. So just make sure you hand start that so you don't destroy it. And you really need to just give it a little squeeze at the end. There's no need to put any type of pipe seals here. Maybe sometimes a little tricky because it needs to be exactly lined up. You gotta shake it a little bit to loosen the tension. And you can see there's no stress on the pipe. And now you can use the to just close it in place. You need a three quarter key. a nice squeeze. That's it. It should work. Let's wipe all the oil. So it does leak now. That's it. So we're all good here. Now I'll go over how to replace that output shaft oil seal. All right, you need to stick a screwdriver in here. And then you need to put something that's hardened. If you use a screw, you'll shear it. So you need something hardened. Look what I did to my screwdriver. And it is hardened. <laughs> so you need to put a screwdriver, put something hardened, and then rotate that with a one and a half inch and pretty long handle and it will require some serious force. All right, so I took the nut off. No longer need this. No, no. Well, I'll need to get a new screwdriver. Uh, now I just need to find how to pull this thing out. Which what I did, I put a screw in the nut and tighten that. can see uh, it's a regular seal you can buy it on Amazon go get yourself a seal puller make your life much easier let's put the new one on I made this wood jig to fit in there just to press it in place so it'll fit the whole thing and not just part of it Cleaned it, remove all the rust, wiped it down, put a little bit of oil, but 
the steel has its own oil. So that should just squeeze the rating. I hope you can see anything, but tapping and rotating at the same time. So when I talked to the expert over the phone, he told me to put some Loctite shaft. Start by holding it by hand just to and I keep that. I actually do want it to move so it will set on the seal. Good. setting it inside, let it spin a little bit. That's it, found a way to do it. Now this needs between 100 to 200 foot pound when you close it. And for the final squeeze. And I'll be able to take it off. Okay, good. So, take it out. We're gonna clean this paper. I'm using full synthetic automatic transmission fluid. It takes one and three quarter. This will be my three quarters, just to make it easy. Yep, three quarters. Okay. 
Now this is a cork. If you spin this, it compresses this rubber piece and locks it in place. So don't try and pull it too hard before you actually untie it and open it. So you need to unscrew it so you can take it out. When you put it in, you can screw it a little bit. It will hold in place so it won't jump back out. This, dip it. Yep. Say even a little too much. If you hold it here and turn it, it will actually lock in place so it doesn't move. So that's important. You see, you can pull it up right now. You have to untie it for it to move. Well, now I can give it some water and uh, start the boat. Make sure this is in neutral. You can actually untie this. As you can see, I disconnected the linkage and made sure that it moves smoothly. Uh, it is important to make sure that your uh, control, uh, the driver controls, moves it from one uh, position to the other and not uh, just partial way. If it will go partially, you will destroy your transmission. So make sure you put it in forward when it's not connected to the linkage. Move the control at the driver's seat to uh, that position and make sure that it still connects with no problem. Make sure it's neutral, make sure the wires are connected, make sure nothing is leaking oil, everything is dry, everything is locked, no wires are in the way. All right. That's it for my video and my explanations. Um, I videoed the manual and put it at the uh, end of this video. You can just uh, watch through it. You can pause uh, whatever you need and read through it. It's very helpful. There's a lot of information there. You can uh, use it to rebuild the entire transmission. It has all the uh, torque settings, the parts. Um, you can use it to find the part number and Google it and you can find probably all of it online. Uh, including parts that are uh, aftermarket or that uh, even the dealer sometimes says that they, they don't have. So uh, good luck.